Welcome to this News 9 special. In Kerala's Siru Malabar Catholic Church, headed for a split after a row erupted over the celebration of the Holy Mass in churches under the Ernakulam Angamali Archdiocese. While a Vatican delegate, Archbishop Cyril Vassal, has warned of canonical punishment against disobedient priests, Kerala parishioners have approached President Murmu to deport Vatican delegate, accusing him of interfering in the administration and threatening the faithful with dire consequences. Well, this is happening in a church that claims to be 2,000 years old and is founded by St. Thomas the Apostle. Now, the situation in the Siro Malabar Church has been in the news, especially in Kerala, and the fight over this particular aspect of whether the priest has to tell the mass facing the people, the congregation that is, or towards the altar has been creating significant friction with a large number of priests being against it and a large number of them in fact going ahead and ensuring that it is carried out. Well, it looks like the papal delegate uh, who was appointed from uh, Rome to look into the matter, he had arrived in uh, Kerala and he had to be brought in with full police security inside the church uh, of St. Mary's where he in fact uh, carried on with the prayers and asked all the disobedient priests to ensure that by August 20th the uniform code on the Holy Mass is implemented. This has led to a series of issues within the church with a large number of them opposing the reforms that have been introduced in the church and even threatening to split from the church. This has resulted in a series of questions being asked as to whether Archbishop George Allen Cherry, who is the head of the church, whether he would be able to hold on to office and at the same time questions being asked as to what would be the issue if on August 20th, if the uniform mass as prescribed by the Vatican is not in fact followed. So, why is it that this particular aspect of the Holy Mass becomes so controversial. Well, it is being said that the Siro Malabar Church has its own identity and therefore trying to going back to its roots, it has resulted in the kind of chaos that has happened on the ground and with many of them in fact opposing the introduction of the reforms, it has resulted in a vertical split within the church and this church commands a following of almost 41 lakhs in India, its adherents spread across the world as well and is a huge political force in the state of Kerala. And right now, this church is facing one of its crucial existential threats, especially when it comes to this and has a fallout on the whole of Kerala politics. Well, what is the issue about the differences over the Holy Mass? Well, the Church Synod had introduced a uniform way of celebrating the Holy Mass in August 2021. Priests celebrating the Holy Mass face the faithful in its first and last parts. Priests turn away to the altar for the rest of the Mass. This is to say that how the prayers are to be conducted facing the people or not. Dioceses under the Siro Malabar adopted the Synod approved Holy Mass. Majority of the Ennakulam Angamali Archdiocese priests supported but their laity posted. In fact, they say they cannot depart from the traditional way of priests facing the faithful during the Mass. And this has become the point of contention. Even despite the Vatican asking them to fall in line, a whole lot of them are saying that they are not yet to go ahead with the instructions that have been given. The Siro Malabar Church is a very powerful political force at the same time. Its adherents uh, form the majority of the Christians in Kerala. It is said that St. Thomas the Apostle is the founder of the church uh, and it is connected with the Catholic Church in Union. But at the same time has its own autonomous rules and it has been sanctioned by the Vatican at the same time. Let bring you some of those uh, statistics. It's the largest Catholic Christian right in Kerala, estimated to be over 2,000 years old. Followers believe their families were baptized by St. Thomas. World 
Ciro came in use as a distinguisher from the Latin Christian rites. That is to say, the rest of the Catholic Church, especially Latin rites, use the Latin form of Mars and local language, while in the Syro Malabar, they use certain aspects of the Syriac language, which is from the Aramaic language. And the dialect is used, Eastern Syriac is what is in fact used, which is said to be one of the languages spoken by Christ. And uh, they have been proudly holding on to it. And this is what defines the identity of that church. But how much of an issue it has become? It has become even a political issue at the national level, saying that foreigners are trying to interfere in matters that are purely Indian. So it is not just a matter of church politics that is coming to light. It has also become a headache for several people. We have with us Ajit Lawrence, who joins us, senior journalist Ajit Lawrence, uh, who is uh, in fact uh, joining us. Ajit Lawrence, can you tell us what exactly has led to the current situation and standoff that we see in the Siro Malabar Church and how much of a political problem will it in fact have? Yeah, okay, uh, let me tell you the, the, the rest of the history of the uh, uh, Oriental Church, that is Siro Malabar Church, you have already read out. Let me tell you that there, the, the, this present dispute actually started uh, during 1990 early days 1990 early days okay there was a movement called uh, liturgical action council lac initiated by a couple of laity saying that they need a holy mass and all the rituals uh, as like that of uh, latin rite that is roman catholic latin rite facing the faithful and the laity the holy mass may be uh, done Facing the holy, uh, uh, I mean, facing the uh, laity and the faithful. Okay, so this liturgical action council uh, managed uh, up to nearly 2000 or something like that, saying that some of the or uh, this group, this LAC group, wanted uh, uh, a holy mass facing the uh, faithful. Besides, besides uh, saying that uh, this is being an Oriental church, they are complied. They are complied and abiding. To the holy uh, holy see and and they don't want the, this the other way around the holy mass which the the, the archdiocese or the synodal Siro malabar synodal is approving now because the the beginning of the according to the Siro malabar church uh, uh, ordeal uh, what they do is just in the beginning they face the people and give the blessing they initiate the mass then at the end also they give the uh, blessing then uh, the rest of the entire procedure, the, the priest or the, uh, the priest or the archbishop or whosoever offering the mass will uh, face the altar, but which is not which is not uh, liked or which is not welcoming for this people who started this LAC liturgical action council. So, and uh, this dispute uh, ended up uh, stopping Cardinal uh, Pavatil, Mar Pavatil, who recently died. He was an archbishop. He wanted to become cardinal. First cardinal of Siro Malabar Church was uh, uh, stopped. I mean, uh, it was then when Pavatil was stopped from becoming uh, archbishop or the, the uh, cardinal of the Siro Malabar First Church in here. Uh, he was stopped and then Varki uh, Videthal was made the first uh, cardinal of the church here. So no, I, I, let, let me ask this question, now, Ajit Lawrence. My question is that, see, I understand fair history about the Siro Malabar Church because it comes, we have, I come from the Orthodox Church and we have a similar kind of history till 1653 AD. And till then, both of us relied on Eastern Syriac uh, liturgies to actually go for the prayers and it said that this is how it happened. In 1653, the way the prayers were conducted in Eastern uh, churches were towards the altar and facing the east. The altar was uh, in such a way that it was built uh, at the eastern corner of the church and you had the priest offering it there. When Mar Pavatil was there, he said, let's go back to our traditions and he went on a Chaldean, uh, you know, similarly taking the liturgy or the, uh, now let me explain to my uh, viewers also what it is. Liturgy is the manner of a prayer book and how you carry on with your a mass, which is to say like for in the Hindu context, a particular prayer book and how you do the puja, the rules and regulations are in fact written like that. So, you have to follow that liturgical aspects and the Siro Malabar church of course, coming from the Persian churches, uh, you know, lineages, it never had a tradition saying that it would face the people and carry on with uh, you know the mass, but it is from Pavatil's time that they said let us go try to go and find out what the Chaldean church did and they try to go back to the liturgy uh, written by uh, Mar Adai and Mar Mari 
and that is when they said that this is how the mass has to be conducted. But why is there resistance to this? Because the aspect of this Rumalaba church being a CO jurist church, that is to say an independent church is to actually have its own identity and one of its identity of course it is its Syriac language and Syriac heritage. But then the issue over here I say is that you a Latin tradition that has been borrowed into the church is what is being the contesting point, is that the case? Because the church, in, it is in the Latin church where you have the priest uh, mo, uh, looking at the congregation and saying the mass. Okay, let me tell you, the, the one, it was one Mr. Saviour who is no more now. Mm -hmm. It was the Saviour who initiated this liturgical action council uh, for uh, following the Latin rite type of mass in the Zero Malabar church. Okay, and uh, when I interviewed him years ago, about 30 years ago, what he said was, uh, this uh, Siro Malabar Church uh, uh, method of uh, offering mass doesn't give any any sort of pious or piety to the people or the laity or the faithful. But whereas when they attend the Latin rite of uh, uh, holy mass, they are much better, much much inclined to the uh, inclined and responsible and reciprocal to the the, the method of Latin rite church uh, holy mass. So they are more convenient and more faithful and they become more uh, complying to the uh, Holy Mass and, and the prayers of the Latin Rite. So they don't want the, the, the Syrian Syrian or Oriental Church mother that which you said as uh, like uh, uh, following the uh, some sort of methods of Hindu culture in here. They just want uh, our Eastern I uh, mean, Western Church like uh, Latin Rite, Roman Catholic, real Roman Catholic are Latin Rite people. So they don't, they want that sort of a Holy Mass, which uh, they don't want to attend uh, uh, in the other way around in Holy, uh, I mean, Zero Malabar Rite. So, uh, Ajit Lawrence, I mean, you know, when we look at this Holy Mass thing, if, if, you are, if I'm looking from outside, uh, a lot of people say that is it that big that whether the priest faces the congregation or the priest faces away from the congregation when he says uh, the mass, is it that big that such a situation uh, it could lead to rather a split in the church? Because right now there is a whole lot of priests who are saying that they will not follow the new rules and they will be disobedient to it. And at the same time we saw the visuals by which uh, Archbishop uh, Cyril Vassal, uh, the, uh, you know, the delegate uh, from uh, Rome was in fact treated when he tried to enter the church and uh, there was a, the entire police had to form a wall around him so that he can enter the church and that is the kind of situation that was being seen with a whole lot of protesters saying that uh, this is not the way to go forward. So what exactly it is? Is it a political issue between two dioceses that is to say Ernakulam, Angamali versus Chagnasheri and you know other Siro, smaller Siro Malabar uh, dioceses and also the issue about whether some of the people do not want because there is this talk that the Holy See, the Vatican might in fact go ahead and ensure that the Siro Malabar church might get a patriarchal status and they do not want George Alangeri to be its first patriarch. Is that also something that is uh, in fact playing out as politics over here? Yeah, true. But, but the thing is, you see, you must see that uh, the uh, Archbishop uh, Vassal, uh, the representative of Holy See, is acknowledging the uh, Oriental Church to follow their way of method of offering the Holy Mass. Okay, even while when they say that, because uh, they say this to follow their own uh, traditional method of offering Mass means, they are acknowledging uh, the Siro Malabar uh, uh, way of uh, offering the Holy Mass. But even while they say that these people who are against the Siro Malabar order are, are really wanting uh, the other way around like Latin Catholic Church, uh, Holy Mass is the best, best way of uh, uh, participating in the Holy Mass. Okay, that is the one of the that is the main reason. But the people uh, who want, I mean, I know many people in here who are uh, Syro Malabar uh, Catholics who are attending Holy Mass in Latin uh, Catholic churches because they are more convenient and comfortable with the Latin Catholic Mass, mass service. Okay, so. They don't want a uh, 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 mass. I and mean, in ordinary day, Latin Catholic Church mass is uh, duration is just hardly 20 minutes. Whereas uh, of a Siro Malabar Church, it's more than 45 minutes. So they don't want waste time, and uh, it's, uh, it is not uh, holy enough for them to uh, be participant in that holy mass. That's what they are, their argument is. They want uh, to be simplified. 
simplified in a language that is being followed as i mean of course that is the malayalam uh, we have a very good mass in the holy uh, latin catholic creed and hence they want that sort of a, a holy mass in here in, in this sir uh, malabar church and but the the the, the hierarchy hierarchy like uh, alancheri and all the people who are uh, part of this sir uh, uh, malabar church who is the uh, supremo in kerala that is archbishop uh, uh, alancheri wants their traditional method of offering the mass like uh, uh, facing the altar not facing the faithful or the laity but this is this has a history of 30 over 30 years i said no over 30 years but this has not been settled anymore say any uh, even after 30 years this has not settled now the holy see and his representative are uh, trying to keep the uh, church that is siro uh, malaba church along with the uh, uh, rc roman catholic latin greek uh, faith acknowledging the holy see as part of the uh, entire universal church now i have uh, one more question see there is this yeah. deadline that has been given on august 20th that they have to fall in line and yeah. still we don't have anything coming in saying that any of the rebelling priests or bishop uh, who's there are also there in his uh, ranks anthony kareel whether they will actually relent so what is uh, the entire thing going to be if they are not going to relent of course we will see a split in the church isn't it yeah that, that is true because you as you have mentioned uh, in your intro uh, there is there is a rift or there is a fight going on between uh, or in uh, orthodox church and uh, the other other church people who are fighting on the street so now even now this archbishop representative of holy see uh, archbishop basil has uh, warned them uh, if if this rift if this fight goes on and if any violence takes place in some uh, some uh, celebrations there won't be any further celebration in public if this uh, rift has not been settled that is what he has warned because they do the catholic church as such uh, do not want uh, any more fight going on in the street in the case of uh, with regard to uh, this uh, dispute on holy, offering the holy mass well ajit lawrence i also saw that when it came to some of these uh, aspects of trying to introduce this one of the issues that we saw is that there was actually since you brought the violence as there was actually violence on the day when it was supposed to be you know uh, the the first time they gave a deadline saying that you have to follow the uniform liturgy you had the priests being pulled down from the altar some of them protesting outside not letting them to get inside the churches one church was in fact shut down because of it and still shut down and then forcefully opened so all that is happening at a time when uh you know the the uh, uh, group of siro malabar church uh, uh, people in fact feel that uh, they are trying to find their place again in kerala society because on one side they are trying to assert themselves politically also uh, my recent numbers say that overall in that church 41 lakh people or people are adherents to it in kerala it could be around 21 to 25 lakh the rest of them spread around the world and dioceses in rest part of the country but 21 lakh of them is a huge political influence that we are looking at and how much of it will politically be seen as an influence being reduced if the split goes because politicians of course will try to polarize and try to you know uh, make the split to work uh, in, it, as it works on numbers they'll try to make sure that the polarization stays so in ernakulam angamali region uh, this split could have a major political impact isn't it yeah true man this will this this zero the rift in now rift in uh, now in siro malaba church will also uh, be taken along with that of the uh, orthodox and uh, uh, the other the other church who are fighting along so they are also a part of uh, becoming a political issue uh, both the church the catholic church, i mean the siro malaba church as well as the uh, uh, orthodox church uh, are trying to take this issue into a political ambience but already this lady who are supporting for this uh, latin rite of uh, holy mass in siro uh, malaba church have filed a suit against this uh, uh, archbishop's uh, archbishop representative of holy see archbishop uh, uh, vasil uh, against uh, uh, against uh, uh, offering this siro uh, malaba rite of uh, holy mass already this fight as you said the fight has already taken into the street but this will definitely have implications on uh, on kerala politics because uh, it's not 21 lakhs people in uh, in kerala this uh, zero malabar 
it's actually 28 28 lakh people uh, of uh, kerala population is chiramalaba uh, uh, church so it is a significant number where this ca church can influence the decisions of politics so the politicians are uh, as well uh, who are not really uh, catholics nor uh, any orthodox church or are uh, even if they are part of the any of the, any of the church any of the uh, faction of this church the problem is they cannot settle, uh, uh, come out to uh, the street or come out to the public and say you have to trust on to uh, Surah Malabar uh, way of uh, uh, Holy Mass or stick on to Latin read of uh, uh, Holy Mass. Only thing, the solution lies with the decision of the Holy See and the people are bound to obey the decision of the Holy See that is being uh, declared or read out by uh, Archbishop Vasil. But at the moment, what I see, uh, Ajit uh, Lawrence, is that uh, there seems to be no obedience at all and people are not even ready because you have the representative from the Holy See being asked to be thrown out of the country because they are saying that he is trying to create enmity between two groups of people. They have petitioned the Prime Minister, they have petitioned uh, the President as well. So, there seems to be no obedience on that part. So, if, what it looks like uh, the Holy See's word is also not being taken on the ground. The thing is, as I said earlier, the LAC, LAC when they uh, when when they wanted this kind of facing uh, holy mass facing the uh, laity or the faithful, they uh, the Archbishop then Archbishop uh, Mar Pavatil was very stubborn and he did not want to let this uh, Latin rite of uh, mass be uh, offered in uh, Suramalabar churches. What these people people who are protesting now against the uh, Suramalabar rite of uh, uh, holy mass what they said was they will split from uh zero malaba church and join the latin read so there is a there is there is an inevitable split uh, as such there is an inevitable split uh, split is being uh, foreseen as such yeah there is a, this people in zero malaba church who wants this uh, uh, holy mass uh, facing the uh, laity or the faithful are willing to join the Syro, uh, Catholic, Syro, uh, Latin Catholic Church, that is RC, Roman Catholic Church. That is what they are threatening about. Then this this political power of the Syro Malabar Church here will be weakened. So in that way, uh, politicians cannot take any side with any of the groups. Well, as you in fact uh, point out and uh, we in fact see the kind of crisis that is being unfolded right here. Uh, one question that uh, I have before I let you go. So, now uh, with this, uh, this, uh, you know, this uh, kind of a deadline that's come on August 20th and at the same time nobody heeding to anyone's words and the kind of uh, scenes that we witnessed uh, at St. Mary's when uh, Cyril Vassal tried to enter the church, the Archbishop tried to enter the church as a people delegate. All this has in fact just shown how on a weak wicket the Sri Malabar church is. So, when you are saying if the split occurs and if a majority of them does join the Latin church because over this mass, uh, how much of a number are you looking at this probable split and what is the kind of number of uh, population that you would see moving towards the Latin church if this happens? It's my impression from uh, reporting this liturgical action council's movement, my impression is that a vertical split would take place. A vertical split would take place, but wherein, wherein the hierarchy like uh, Alangeri and, and his followers and his juniors or his subordinates will stay with the uh, Sira Malabha Church, whereas the priest just, uh, not the, the hierarchy, but the uh, pre priesthood level uh, and, and the people, lady who wants this uh, Latin rite of uh, Holy Mass followed in, in the church, will have a vertical split. Whereas Whereas the hierarchy will remain in the Sri uh, Church. That is what is uh, impending, you know. And uh, Ajay Lawrence, one more question that we have. You're, if you are looking at a vertical split, will there be cases now for the assets of the church as well? Who will be in control of this? Because that is what we in fact see, uh, once there is a vertical split, we in fact see this that there will be cases trying to find out whether, you know, schools, colleges, churches that belong to one faction, which will go, uh, will it be, uh, it's going to be a negotiated settlement or it looks like a huge case is going to open up on that level. There will be a huge legal battle on the assets of the church. That's why I reiterate that uh, the, the entire hierarchy, uh, Alan Jerry and his, his hierarchy are holding the power and the, and the wealth of the church. So. 
this will definitely take into the street as a fight and also in civil courts and criminal court cases this will end up well uh, it looks like uh, the kind of a situation that we are in fact uh, seeing and a whole lot of uh, problematic situation that we see uh, ajit lawrence if this happens and there is a significant move towards the latin church i think uh, the siro malabar church would feel often because uh, they have been looking for an autonomous entity being an autonomous entity under the pope they've been trying to be under the catholic church but if a significant portion breaks and moves to the cat, uh, you know the latin church which is the larger catholic church of course they will feel often so do you think there will be pressure and i'm asking this again because there was a movement towards that also in the 1970s will there be a pressure within the siro malabar church to break all ties with the holy see and become an independent church no i mean uh, now uh, as such uh, the siro malabar church and the holy see are on the same path of uh, having an independence for siro malabar church as oriental church on its soul so there won't be any dispute between uh, siro malabar church in from kerala and with the holy see so that will be that will be inspired that sort of a dispute will be inspired because the holy see and the uh, rc roman catholic church is uh, with the siro malabar church for uh, continuing their way of uh, method of uh, uh, offering the church uh, um, holy mass and all the other ordeals and things but they don't have any any dispute with the holy see because if the holy see has any dispute for uh, this uh, this sort of siro malabar church following their own traditional methods Uh, they would not have sent this uh, archbishop uh, vasil here to settle this issue because vasil has come to acknowledge the consent acknowledge and consent the holy sees uh, will saying that they can follow their own uh, ritual and right in here as they have been following it since 300 years but so they don't have a they may not uh, uh, churumalabar church will not have any dispute with the holy see or the roman catholic the universal catholic church but the thing is when the people when there is a when there, there will be a split of uh, faithful uh, from uh, churumalabar church and applying to uh, catholic uh, latin catholic church means uh, whether the latin catholic church can approve and take these people along with them uh with the permission of policy that there will be a question like that if the people who are not willing to abide by the uh what do you call the dictum of holy see uh, through uh, this uh, archbishop basil how can uh, this people be uh, included in the latin uh, right of uh, church that will be a question that will be a church that will be a church, uh, question here in for the latin catholic uh, hierarchy to acknowledge because the latin catholic church cannot take any decision apart right, from right. policy decision right uh, thank you ajit lawrence for in fact uh, speaking to us and giving us a detailed idea about what exactly is happening when it comes to the siromalabar church well with that it's all that i have uh, time for this uh, keep uh, tuned for uh, news 9 on the other side we tell you the kind of flood situation that is there in himachal uttarakhand and punjab and the kind of difficulties the people there are facing that's on the other side Pakistan is actually genociding Baloch people. So being Baloch is a crime. If you are a Baloch, it means in the eyes of Pakistan, uh, you don't have any right to live. The Chinese and Pakistanis are colonizing the Baloch and exploiting their resources. Baloch uh, are the struggle in continuing on with us. China will draw the Pakistan military withdraws from Balochistan and your approach completely uh, authority to decide for themselves. The Baloch feel that if they don't act now, they will become marginalized. What lies ahead for Balochistan? Balochistan. Bangladesh 2.0 streaming now. Brahmos stealthy. No. To size. It flies at three times the speed of sound and cuts through a warship like a hot knife through butter. China's navy has threatened its neighbors. and they are turning to the brahmos for protection 
the warship killer this and more streaming on world's first news ott news 9 plus download now इन्फॉर्म सिविल कोड के बारे में तो बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर ने और कॉन्स्टेंट असेंबली में जो डिबेट हुई ये तो उसी समय लागू हो गया होगा एट दैट टाइम डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर थॉट इट विल बी ऑप्शनल इट वाज नेवर टू बी इंपोज्ड जो डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी है उसके सेक्शन है उसकी धारा जो 44 है उसी में इस बात का जिक्र है द स्टेट विल एंडेवर टू इंप्लीमेंट कॉमन सिविल कोड आर्टिकल 44 ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सेज that we shall endeavor so what does it mean right now we are not ready we shall endeavor in some time in future nothing has been done over it, over it and no consensus has been built can it be argued that the directive principles of state policy where uniform civil code exists in article 44 is bad for indian citizens can the constitution be bad for a set of citizens no it's a package the constitution in its entirety has been adopted You don't have a choice as a citizen to say I like part 3 which are fundamental rights. I don't like part 4 which is direct principles of state policy. So let me ask a question. Our constitution we all became Indian citizens through the constitution we are all equal before law article 14. We all are given the freedom of speech and expression, of life and liberty, protection of life and liberty. Article twenty-five is fundamental right. It will endanger endanger their rights to uh, uh, religious uh, to propagate their religious uh, traditions, to follow their own customs and traditions. Constitution is one. Citizens are one. This is not about religion. This is about rights of Indian citizens. You cannot. you cannot just simply uh, support a proposition which says first law has no place in india you can't say that anyone saying that there are many countries in the world that have only one single law is not true even america doesn't have one single law every state has its own law so why are they tell why are they speaking lies about something that is according to them very important for india is prakar ke jo family laws hain आपके व्यक्तिगत अपने तरीके से रहेंगे रीति रिवाज लोग कंफ्यूज करते रिचुअल्स को लेकर आपका काजी विवाह कराएगा मेरे यहाँ पंडित कराएगा कि यहाँ साथ फेरा होगा या आर्य समाजी तरीके से होगा लेकिन एक व्यक्ति एक विवाह करेगा शादी का रजिस्ट्रेशन होना चाहिए इसमें क्या किसी को आपत्ति होनी चाहिए डाउनलोड नाउ He thought he could outlast us. And one year later, the evidence is right here in this room. Who will blink first? So far from preventing the expansion of NATO, Russian ag- actions have actually resulted in the expansion of NATO. It's a mess for Russia and it's a mess for the Western world, for NATO and the United States. Putin is a dictator, and if he loses, that means the end of his regime. and probably of him personally so he has to keep going year 2 no end in sight streaming now china won't let us rest easy on our borders but they will keep flooding our markets what does xi jinping really want i think he wants the indian market no doubt about it it's really a matter of showing their dominance india's great chinese conundrum Nobody can contain it. Not the United States, not China, not anybody else. Frenemies, streaming now. Brahmos, stealthy, lethal, precise. 
It flies at three times the speed of sound and cuts through a warship like a hot knife through butter. China's navy has threatened its neighbors and they are turning to the Brahmos for protection. The Warship Killer this and more streaming on world's first news OTT, News 9 Plus. Download now. President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. Now, you see, I would never say these things, at least not in a public address, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. Did President Obama say those things? No. But it looks pretty realistic. It's a, it's a realistic video because it's called a deep fake. Will you believe everything I say? Because uh, how do you know that it's me, a real person, and not an artificial intelligence bot or avatar? Now, unfortunately, while at one end we've seen artificial intelligence really doing things that were unimaginable, it also has a slightly darker side. And the dark side comes from deep fake which not only impersonates the face of a person and the actions of a person, but also the voice. And with that, it becomes a very difficult environment to navigate because you don't know what you are seeing is real or fake. There might be certain public figures that it should not edit. There might be certain contexts that it should not edit. We can think of these scenarios. So if we are a degree ahead and visualize, what these tools would do or what if these malicious guys get an access to these tools what could be the possibility that they do i think the game is there you know that is where we'll have to kind of build systems around these generators so at source only we control this and then the access to deep fix what kind of video am i processing is it of a public figure is it a too personal video about anyone such checks and balances have to be there the nba trusted me with the next generation Recently, there was a very weird news I read, entirely plausible, but it talked about talking to the dead. How do you do that? The same deep fake, they have taken your dead relative, your close relative, it could be the parents, it could be anyone, and they make a deep fake video of that person and then feed within artificial intelligence so that person is having a conversation with you. But some other people seem to like it, but technically this is possible and this is happening. During Ukraine war, wherein the hackers using the AI technology beamed a video on a popular news channel where the president of Ukraine was shown appealing his citizens and soldiers to surrender to Russians. There have been instances of, you know, Pentagon has been bombed, kind of AI enabled or AI generated pictures have been shown on internet or channels. So these kind of things, uh, when you try to analyze the event around what is happening, uh, you know, around that time, try to cross check the facts, then you can come to know about the reality. But if a common man, he sees these kind of things, then they can be tricked into believing, yes. I'm particularly worried about the scope for disinformation using AI, uh, particularly in the defense architecture. Those systems are eventually penetrated uh, by deep fakes and uh, by artificial intelligence, it could result in a lot of chaos. Now obviously, deep fake technology poses significant dangers and uh, to the world and to India as well. And imagine when you're at the cusp of election season, featuring a fairly influential political leader from a party that you follow and perhaps an opposition, where it becomes very difficult for you to understand Given the polarization and the confusion where something that actually came into your social media feed was actually never said. Pakistan is actually genociding Baloch people. So being Baloch is a crime. If you are a Baloch, it means in the eyes of Pakistan, uh, you don't have any right to live. The Chinese and Pakistanis are colonizing the Baloch and exploiting their resources. The Baloch uh, armed struggle will continue unless China withdraws, the Pakistan military withdraws from Balochistan and the approach complete uh, authority to decide for themselves. The Baloch feel that if they don't act now, they will become marginalized. What lies ahead for Balochistan? Balochistan. 
Bangladesh 2.0 Streaming now Gautam Adani One of the richest men in the world Or a business honcho Accused of manipulating the market Adani ji, how did he reach the number of 609 numbers? Only one question was asked Narendra Modi ji, what is your relationship with Adani ji? He has given the space, the railways, the airport, which he has no experience also. So the country's interest has been compromised. Government has been very clearly supporting few industrial groups, including Adani's industrial group. Target Adani, streaming now. With all this gear, you must be wondering if I'm climbing a mountain. Well, let me give you a wider look of this place. This is Asia's largest mountain of shame. A mountain of waste, almost the height of the Qutub Minar. When you enter capital cities of some of the biggest countries in the world, you don't have three garbage mountains waiting to welcome you, depending on whichever side of the city you enter from. The thing is that a lot of times we talk about landfills only when there's a fire at the land. You need to understand that a landfill is at fire almost throughout the year. It's only when the firefighters are not able to douse the fire is when it actually catches the nation's attention, the city's attention, or media attention. The towering landfills worsen one of Delhi's biggest problems. Pollution. Life around the landfill is a curse. Doctor Delhi's garbage mountains are now a fetid symbol of the national capital's trash problem. The question is, who is to be blamed? Watch Delhi's Garbage Mountains. Streaming on News 9 Plus for the Genflix. At GPT, it can generate codes and human-like responses through texts, write stories, and do a lot more. I work in a newsroom with anchors, researchers and scriptwriters, graphic artists, producers, video editors, camera crew. But does a newsroom really need them today? All of us have to think about unique and distinctive value addition that cannot be automated or repeated or replaced by a machine. Chat GBT may kill many companies. A human has to be in the loop with an ability to control this. Dark Side of the Boom. Streaming now. China won't let us rest easy on our borders, but they will keep flooding our markets. What does Xi Jinping really want? I think he wants the Indian market, no doubt about it. It's really a matter of showing their dominance. India's great Chinese conundrum. Nobody can contain it. Not the United States, not China, not anybody else. Frenemies, streaming now. Brahmos, stealthy, lethal, precise. It flies at three times the speed of sound and cuts through a warship like a hot knife through butter. China's navy has threatened its neighbors and they are turning to the Brahmos for protection. The Warship Killer This and more streaming on world's first news OTT News 9 Plus Download now Pakistan is actually genociding Baloch people. So being Baloch is a crime. If you are a Baloch, it means in the eyes of Pakistan, uh, you don't have any right to live. 
the Chinese and Pakistanis are colonizing the Baloch and exploiting their resources. Baloch uh, armed struggle will continue and yes, China will draw the Pakistan military withdraws from Balochistan and give Baloch complete uh, authority to decide for themselves. The Baloch feel that if they don't act now, they will become marginalized. What lies ahead for Balochistan? Balochistan. Bangladesh 2.0 streaming now The world is facing a crisis You've noticed an increase in the amount of money that you're spending at the grocery store you're not alone The rising food prices are starting to bite Millions are struggling to put food on the table raising alarm bells across the globe Fresh vegetables are scarce. It's only going to get more expensive. Food insecurity looks like obesity. We have an abundance, but it's the wrong food. But what if we could reimagine the global food system? A great leap forward is making food more affordable and sustainable. As the global population continues to rise, the demand for food is increasing. If we have more mouth, obviously we have to produce more to feed everyone. Putting a huge amount of pressure on the world's arable land. Traditional agriculture relies on the use of chemicals. The natural way is less productive, more susceptible to nature's shocks. Prices for labor, energy and raw materials are skyrocketing. Making it expensive for food producers to even transport their crops. When the farmer produces something in his farm, he has to travel a lot of distance. Investors think more price increases are coming, bringing back the era of resurgent inflation. Inflation is when prices rise over time. It's when broccoli and bananas to rice and wheat cost more than they used to, meaning you get less bang for your buck. Take a look at this chart. Global food prices have surged 65% since the COVID-19 pandemic. Any 